Alright, um, have y'all ever wondered like what happens when like, a star dies? Um, when a star dies, consider that the star is big enough, a black hole can happen. Everybody knows what a black hole is, it just sucks things in, right? So first off, what I want to accomplish with this speech is to talk about black holes and some of their properties. And now black holes, I think they're interesting just because our galaxy, the Milky Way, is at the very edge of a black hole. Well, to know all of this, I read a book by Stephen Hawking uh, called A Brief History of Time. I also researched in NASA and I also read online articles about this topic, right? Now, understanding black holes can lead to uh, answers of questions about the universe that we've been searching for. Now, I want to talk about four different things about black holes, how they're formed, uh, the types of black holes, what is the event horizon of a black hole, and how matter behaves around, uh, around the black hole, right? So the first topic, and without further delay, I'm just going to jump into it, right? The first topic is how a black hole is formed. Well, to understand that, we have to first know what a star is and how it's formed. So uh, Stephen Hawking says that the way a star is formed is you have hydrogen atoms in space, and because of gravitational pull, they get together and just start bouncing off of each other. Well, the more this happens, the more heat there is in this reaction, and eventually they hit each other and they just stick together. Well, when they stick together, there's like a nuclear reaction going on, kind of like what a nuclear reactor does, but it's just in space and it's like a thousand times bigger. So when this happens, the star starts to shine just because of the heat that's given off, and <coughs> the star is formed. Well, uh, how black hole works, which is a website, says that um, eventually the hydrogen is going to just die off after millions and millions of years, going to run out, and the star is going to start to decay, fall upon each other, and cause a supernova. Now Stephen Haw Hawking defines supernova as a huge, ex huge explosion by the star, where the star loses a lot of its mass and leaves behind a dense core. Okay, and then NASA says that if this core is three times bigger than, us, than our sun, then a black hole happens. Alright, so that is how black holes form. The right? star goes kaboom, and then we have the black hole. Well, there are different types of black holes. So that's my second point, talking about the types of black holes. So we have the first type, which is the as I just said, this black hole that's three times bigger than our sun. And the second type of NASA says they're called supermassive black holes. These are millions and millions of times bigger than our sun. So they're just, <coughs> they work in different ways. But Stephen Hawking calls them primordial black, hole, uh, black holes, which basically means that they have been there way before our, our existence and the existence of planets or anything. All right, so now we know what are black, how black holes are formed what are uh, the types of black holes. So I'm going to jump into the event horizon of black holes, which leads me to my third point, the event horizon. So Stephen Hawking says that the event horizon is the very edge of the black hole, and essentially is the point where light cannot even outrun the gravitational pull. Now we all know that light is the fastest traveling thing that we know of. If light cannot even outrun this gravitational pull, then nothing else can. So light kind of forms this uh, edge of a black hole. Stephen Hawking also calls it the point of no return. So what he means by that is that you can be on space just going and you could not feel anything and as soon as you pass the, uh, the event horizon, you're going to just be sucked in by the gravitation. Alright, now that leads me to my fourth point and it's matter behavior. Now because of this, um, to understand the matter behavior around a black hole, we have to understand what's a particle-antiparticle concept. So Wikipedia it says that the particle-antiparticle basically means you have a particle, which we all know, like electrons, neutrons, atoms, all of that. They all have an antiparticle, which is like if you have an electron, which is negative, negatively charged, the anti-electron is the same mass, the same everything, but it's positively charged. What Stephen Hawking says with this is that when a particle meets an antiparticle, they just annihilate each other. So basically, in space, there's no empty space. It's just particles, antiparticles meeting each other all times and destroying each other. Now, since matter cannot be created nor destroyed, they create, they do give off heat and energy. All right. So now we have an idea of what that does. Now, how that relates back to the black hole because when you have the event horizon. 
sometimes matter falls into the matter crosses the event horizon, falls into the black hole, and have a charge in the and the particles falling into the black hole switch sometimes, not all the time. That so that means that if something positively charged falls into the black hole, then it becomes negatively charged. And then it means it's anti-particle, which like I said, it's already negatively charged. And when they hit each other, they don't annihilate each other, they just make each other stronger. And they are able to escape the black hole, but they don't escape the black hole like they were before, they just escape the black hole as radiation. So, what does that do? That makes a black hole not be just a black speckle in space, that makes it bright. So that is something that was uh, completely different than what we all thought before, because we thought that black holes were just black spots and they were going to be really hard to see in space. Well, since because of that matter of behavior, they're actually very, very bright. In fact, um, uh, Goes in one of his articles says that NASA had found two black holes that were brighter than many of the stars around them, and they even and they even had um, they even had this, the gamma radiation by one of the primordial black holes. So, what all this does, all this does according to how black, uh, black hole works, is that it gives a black hole mass, of course, because of the core in the middle. It gives charge because it just depends. It can be negatively or positively charged. And it gives him an angle um, of rotation. Now, the angle of rotation just means it's either spinning around itself or spinning around other things. More than likely, another black hole. So, now that we know all those things, it's interesting to put it together and just realize that our galaxy is at the very edge of the black hole. So how does that affect us? How does it doesn't affect us, you know? And in conclusion, I guess, we talked about four different things, right? We talked about how black holes are formed. We talked about the types of black holes. We talked about the event horizon. And we talked about the gamma radiation that is given off by black holes, making them be actually brighter and not darker than we thought. Thank you very much. Let's turn it up. Thank you.